Hello, this is Jeff Steiner. And Jan, are you there? I am, Jeff. Hello, hello. Bonjour. This is our episode number four. Uh, episode. How's the weather? We'll start with the weather. We'll start. The weather is beautiful. <clears throat> me. It, it is down here, too. Windy but beautiful. Okay, you get wind up there then too. Yeah, we get wind. We don't get a lot, but we did get wind. This, this, um, we got, we got wind. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. um, but it's very clear. Uh, in the sun, it's warm, but with the wind, it's uh, cold. Yeah, yeah. With some mountains, anyway. Do you know down here in the Rhone Valley, it's been blowing up to 120 kilometers an hour. I don't, I don't know. I don't have a sense of what it, that is per miles anymore. But 120, there's some red blows pretty hard. 70, at least 70 miles an hour. Yeah, it's yeah, it it just whips through here, and and um, it's you know it gets really tiring because it's just you 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 can't spend time outside. Yeah, but, it does. Um, it does. Yeah, and how's but the I saw. How's the weather in California? Well, that's. I'll send you a link. Um, a bit of my family there sent me some um, links to. There was snow. Well, actually, it was a hailstorm in Huntington Beach. Oh my and god! And the whole beach is covered with white snow. I'll send you the link because that's. I've never seen that, and I, you know, was born and raised there. So that's something. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. The whole. You see the waves, and then. Uh, and then the um, the whole beach is 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 white. Yeah. That's, okay. That's good. So anyway, I I did a bit more cooking this week, and oh, I wow. just kind of um, I can't. Well, it's too windy to do anything outside. I can't touch <laughs> you the can't garden. Go inside. <laughs> so I stay inside. But um, I uh, I saw a video from one of our expat friends, um, an American in Paris that cooks a lot. And uh, he was doing tartetta, uh -huh. which is kind, which is an abs, upside down apple tart. Really, it's 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 like our pineapple upside down cake, you know, in the in that idea. But there is no cake; it's a tart, and um, you know, it involves quite a bit of sugar and it involves quite a bit of butter. So now we're back to all these calorie things again. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, you have to run against the wind. Yes. Ride your bike against the wind. That's Ride what your bike against here. the wind, absolutely. Uh, but anyway, so I send you some pictures because yes. I do, you know, like I said, I buy a lot of these apple, you know, crates of apples. And um, I just, you know, cook them up and I put one little sachet of, uh, of vanilla in with it. Which is sugared vanilla. I do add just a tiny bit of, uh, like a tablespoon of um, dark sugar and a little bit of lemon juice and then you just cook it down you don't have to turn it into complete applesauce but then you can either put um, pastry on top of that and flip it and then you've got kind of an apple tart but without all the sugar or butter because you don't have to use you don't have to add that or you can just uh, then I have all these apples that we've been eating every night for dessert with a yogurt and um, and a BN a cookie <laughs> I'll, I'll show you those next week. But uh, so I did my uh, I did uh, tartata, um, the diet tartata, and um, so anyway, I've sent you some pictures, and you Send can kind of check. They look very good. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, and it makes quite a bit. So I just put that in the refrigerator, and we have a little bowl of that every night for dessert with, um, you know, with a cookie and a yogurt, and. Um, Without all the calories, so it's and it's so easy. They just cook down within you know half an hour. It's just you really know, really easy. Like a, you cook down the apples then. Right? Yeah, you just cook down the apples. You just okay. cook them down in a frying in a pan on the stove, which is what I showed you. And you know, I just cooked them down for about a half an hour. You don't really have to add water. I added just a tiny. I added probably two tablespoons of water, and a half a lemon juice. A half a squeezed lemon, and um, and that's all you have to add. You don't want to add too much water at all because it, you know the, the the apples make a lot of their own juice. 
But, you know, it was just kind of a playoff of one of our compatriots in Paris that does the tartatin that is a bit more involved. It, 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 you know, the tartatin, it's pretty easy, but you do have to add quite a bit of sugar. You have to add butter. And then once you cook it down, uh, then you put, and you put the pastry on top, then you have to bake it. So it's a longer process than just cooking down some fresh apples, adding a little tiny bit of sugar, vanilla, and lemon, and then you've got a great dessert without the calories. <laughs> you got a great dessert without the well, calories. Well, when you live here all the time, you got to watch it. you got to watch it. You, gotta, you, you have to watch it, absolutely. And last yeah. week I talked about the uh, walnut oil that I had. Oh, yeah. It was a couple years old, so it was bad as you oh. had um, thought it turned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's too bad. But I saw on television, I saw on the news, there was a how the walnut oil is made. It's mm -hmm. really interesting because it's made the uh, old-fashioned way. Wow, this this was, and I've seen it actually in some fairs. Basically, what they do is they take the walnuts, so the walnuts have been cracked and everything, and then they crush them. So you crush them. You basically have to crush them. They have a a wheel that turns, and usually what they'll do is they'll have a horse. Oh, right. The horse right. is going around in circles, crushing. Oh, okay. in their, I think the, the wheels were like a ton. Were, yeah, yeah, you'd have to, yeah, really crush them. Really, and they, I mean, they were just like crush them like you can't believe. Then you heat them, uh -huh. and then you press them. Okay. And then you get your, then you get your, your oil. Your From oil. That, that point, that, that you get your oil. Yeah, yeah. What do they do with the rest of the walnut? It'd be interesting uh, I think they throw them out. They throw them out and um, they they toss it. Um, mm. The thing is, is it's really the the, the pressure is, is like is like I don't know how many tons or something, but it's yeah, incredible. yeah, it's yeah. absolutely incredible, and um, it does a really really does a lot. And but it does take it does take a lot of process. It, it, it's yeah, definitely, it's not something that just happens. Yeah. yeah, but you know that's something that's good to know is oils do turn rancid. Um, you know, after a couple of years, and any kind of specialty oils. What I, I actually cook with sesame oil. Um, I just love that. So I started buying the big bottles of it, but I don't cook enough. Uh -huh. And I get halfway through this big bottle of sesame oil, and it would already kind of, you know, you, well, I don't cook with that much oil. I, I try and avoid, you know, a lot of oils. But uh, so what I've started doing it's it's not as economic. In the long run, it is, but I buy the small bottle of sesame oil, and it just, you know, because I don't use it that much, but it doesn't go rancid. So anytime you buy a specialty oil, like walnut oil or, you know, any kind of specialty oil, uh, better to stick with a, with a smaller bottle if it's not something you're going to use every day, because they do go rancid, and you have to, and then you don't want to use them because it'll ruin the whole dish. The, ran the rancidity really comes through, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately. And yeah. you know, the one thing I saw was really interesting on this on social media. It was mostly on Facebook, uh, and I think this was from the summer that somebody, an American, it was actually in California, was oh, actually, yeah. no, it's northern California because it was Humboldt County. They actually went to France to get medical care. Wow! I mean, they France. moved here. What's that? Did they move here? No, they didn't move here. It was nothing about moving. It was that they had they had gone to Toulouse. Yeah. And they had a rotator cuff. They had a rotator cuff injury. So it was kind of elective surgery. Um, I think that they they were having physically physical problems. But um, they did that, and they went to they went to France. And the person, it was the insurance picked it up, and it was not some people. It was interesting on social media. Some of the comments, you know, they're they're using they're abusing the system, the French system, et cetera, et cetera. And what happened is that the insurance company paid for it. So the, the French hospital got paid. It wasn't bad. The French hospital got paid. It wasn't about yeah. that at all. But the guy went there and went to Toulouse, and I think he went there for about a week or I don't know if it's two weeks, but at least ten days, to, a week to ten days, and. Um, he went and he loved it, of course, he, and, he, and he, did his, you know, he did his operation, but he also was able to do tight sightseeing. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a company, I look, I, there's a company listed on the internet, I will list, it, I will list the, the link on my page on my website, and uh, there's a French company that does this. Huh. 
Oh, okay. And yep. they're in they're they're in Toulouse. They're in they have a they have a map of you can go to the website and you can see where oh, they're okay. at. They're in Paris, of course. Lyon, of course. Wow. And it was really really interesting. I mean, I just thought it was interesting. It was cheaper. It was cheaper for the person to come here and get yeah. the surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, the world is really changing. I mean, like I said, last summer when I broke my wrist, uh -huh. I went to the hospital in Montelimar, and it was on the um, for the Bastille weekend. So the do the orthopedic doctor on call was an American from California. <laughs> Go figure. And Only I broke American my wrist that weekend. So, I mean, this doctor from California took really good care of me, explained everything in English, and, um, but I do have to laugh, you know, I mean, we, I'm very fortunate because I'm having a few little joint problems now and everything is covered, but I went yesterday and um, to the rheumatologist and he, because my knee was a bit swollen, so he put some, you know, needles in it. I asked if he could not relieve that. And um, I said, I'm not dreaming of needles in my knees, but <laughs> you could do what you did the last time. So anyway, he did the process, and he kind of, he obviously didn't hit a nerve, but you know, there's at one point this sharp pain shot up my leg, and I screamed shit <laughs> in his doctor in the doctor's office. And then I kind of kept on, on, you know, kind of ranting and raving and just getting the energy out. And um, this poor French doctor, he was pretty chic about it. He said, boy, you're really letting go. And, <laughs> and just, just verbal uh, arena of the bouche. The bouche of healthcare. All right. Well, that's good. I got to get your, get your stuff. Okay, Jan. Well, it's yeah. been nice talking with you. It's been fun chatting with you. Oh, okay. And I do have some fun things coming up. Okay, I'm going good. down. Yeah, tomorrow we are going to go back. We are going to go to the market. We weren't able to go last week. What and market is that? Friend, uh, the truffle market. Ah, truffles. All right. Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah, as long as it's still kind of winter, I'm kind of hanging in the kitchen and doing some cooking stuff. So we're going to the truffle market, and Where is actually, that at? well, it's down in. Uh, it's a bit further south of here. It's about a forty-minute drive. It's in Richefranche, and the. Um, Oh, Peter Mall, the guy that wrote the uh, book uh, A Year in Provence, anyway, he talks about Riche Franche in his book um, and the truffle market. There's a couple truffle markets down that way. I, I used to work in real estate in one of the little villages, so I know. But, um, but this, is, this is kind of the well-known one. So it's a fun little market, and um, I'll take some pictures, and I think we'll buy a truffle, and then I can maybe – gosh, it's too bad. You know what they need to come up with on computers is – that the odors can go through because <laughs> they stink. <laughs> well, we start on that. On that, um, I don't want to say it. On it that note, something to look forward to next week. Yes, yes. So you have a great week. You too. And we'll talk next week. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Bye. Yeah.